Okay, Mr. Watson here, and in this video, we're going to be talking about muscle fiber types. So just to add some context to this, now, we don't need to know too much about the structure of skeletal muscle for what we need to cover, but just to give some context, we'll put it in here. So as you can see, we've got the gastrocnemius, okay, one of, with it attachment to the tibia. Then we have a muscle bundle, and then within that muscle bundle is a muscle fiber. Now, you can get much more complicated diagrams of this, um, but we ain't looking to go into that because we don't need to go into action potential and recruitment of muscle fibers, um, etc., etc. We just need to focus on the characteristics for now. But just for context, that is where you'll find a muscle fiber within the muscle belly within a bundle. Okay, so types of muscle fiber. Now, at GCSE for Cambridge, you'll have known two types of muscle fibers, slow and fast twitch, um, but we now break them into three. There becomes a second type of fast twitch fiber, but the names we will call them at AS level Cambridge are slightly different. Okay, so as I've just said, skeletal muscles built up of these three three muscle fibers. So the first one we have is slow oxidative. Okay, so you'll have known this is slow twitch. They contract slowly. Okay, and um, so that's our first one. We'll go into a little bit more detail as we move through this presentation. <clears throat> Next, we have fast oxidative glycolytic. Okay, um, now, this is the extra, so, and I'll, I'll explain more as we go on, it is a second type of fast twitch, but it does have aerobic energy sources. They are limited, but it can access both energy sources, so we've got the fast oxidative glycolytic, and then fast glycolytic, okay? And if you can notice anything across these three pictures, as, as you go from left to right, simply put, you see a lot less red in the fast glycolytic compared to the slow oxidative. Um, and we'll find out the reason for that. But we have a lot more red fibers um, down the slow twitch end due to um, good blood supply and oxygen. But let's, let's go into that. Let's unpack that. Slow oxidative to start us off. Okay, the first thing we're going to look at is the structure. Very common in the Cambridge exam questions at AS level is you'll either be asked to give two structural characteristics of fibers, um, or, or more than two, or two functional characteristics, or you might just be asked to list five characteristics where you can take up to three from one list and two from another. So let's see what these structural characteristics are and how they might link to functions. So the first one, we have the fiber color, which is red. Um, and this is because they have a good blood supply. They have oxygen um, going into the muscle, okay? Um, and they're used within the aerobic energy system, okay? Um, so they need oxygen. Aerobic energy system relies on oxygen, okay? So that's where they get the red in color and also to do with the myoglobin, which we'll come on to in a moment, okay? Fiber size is small. They have a small um, neuron size, okay? The size of the neuron is small, um, which leads to slow contractions and... Um, sl uh, lower force, okay? High number of mitochondria, okay? Number of mitochondria is high. Now, the mitochondria, okay, is located in muscle fibers, and it's where energy is produced with oxygen, okay? So somehow, you hear, sometimes you hear powerhouse cell, etc., etc., um, energy factory or uh, some names put around but mitochondria is involved in with oxygen and because we're slow oxidative and we're going to be working aerobically with oxygen 
It's natural to have a high number of mitochondria located in the muscle fibers so we can produce aerobic energy with oxygen. Same with the capillaries, okay? We have a high number of capillaries. It's capillary dense, we could say. And capillaries transport oxygen and nutrients to the muscles, okay? And remove waste products. And you'll find the capillaries in a bed, a capillary bed, in between arteries and veins, okay? So a high number of capillaries, and as we've seen, there's a link to oxygen here. It's involved in the transportation of oxygen. So it's high, it's slow oxidative, it's aerobic, we're using oxygen, okay? The myoglobin content is high. Myoglobin is a pigment, okay, that binds to oxygen, okay? So pretty much it's where oxygen will bind before it goes to the mitochondria, um, and this gives it the red color. This contributes to the red fiber color. Okay, so myoglobin, it binds to oxygen. So as you can see there, another link to oxygen. So if we're talking about slow oxidative, we know we need oxygen because it's aerobic. So as soon as we see mitochondria, capillaries, myoglobin, we already know it's going to be high due to that link. PC stores are low, so phosphocreatine stores are low. So um, we go over energy systems in A2, but phosphocreatine, creatine is something that's used to generate energy in very fast explosive movements. But we have a small fiber size um, and low in force, so we don't have high um, creatine stores. Low in glycogen stores, now, as we're using oxygen, you can get oxygen from carbohydrates, um, glycogen into glucose, um, but that will depend on the intensity. So if you're at a low intensity, the idea is we'd like to use triglyceride stores, fat stores, okay? But naturally, as intensity goes up, and you can still work aerobically at a higher intensity, and then you might use more glycogen, okay? And before you go across that anaerobic threshold. But in terms of when we're comparing the structures between all of these is our glycogen store um, is low. Okay, this is safe for higher intensity work. So now let's look at the function. The function. How do these structures link to function? Now I'll probably end up repeating myself here a lot because I can't help myself and I've already been saying it. Um, but the speed of contraction is slow. We have a small fiber size and the speed of contraction is slow. We're working aerobically. We're meeting the demands of oxygen um, through aerobic work. So it just contracts slow um, and it's a low force of contraction. Okay. Now, its resistance to fatigue is high. Because we're supplying the muscle with the oxygen it needs, okay, using these slow oxidative fibers, we can withstand fatigue, we can resist fatigue, okay, and it takes us a lot longer to get tired, okay? Aerobic capacity, I've said that probably a hundred times, it's high, we're working aerobically, slow oxidative with oxygen, high aerobic capacity, Anaerobic capacity is low. We are not working anaerobically here. We are using oxygen. We have high numbers of capillaries, myoglobin, and mitochondria. So we, we don't need to work anaerobically. We, we are structurally ready to work with oxygen. So, And an athlete would be a marathon um, but endurance exercise. Okay, so endurance type activities that are usually of a lower intensity and you will use oxygen and you will work aerobically and you will use these slow oxidative fibers. And we could go into genetics and things here. Some people are genetically um, more suited to endurance fiber. They have a higher number of slow oxidative fibers in the body. Um, on average, an average person has a 50-50% split between slow and fast but um, some are genetically more suited to particular types of activities. So, for example, a marathon runner 
might have more slow twitch fibers in the gastrocnemius and therefore they're genetically more suited to endurance activities such as the marathon. Okay, moving on, fast oxidative glycolytic. So the first thing we can notice here, the red cells have gone down, less myoglobin here. So we can pretty much see what's going to happen. Structure, the fiber color is white. It's more of a fast twitch fiber than it is slow twitch, but it does have the ability to use or the capacity to use oxygen, which is why it has oxidative in its name. And um, But it is more of a fast twitch fiber. Okay. Their fiber size is large. Okay. The number of mitochondria is moderate, not as high um, as slow oxidative, but not as low as we're going to see next. Moderate number of capillaries, moderate number of myoglobin, because we're still working at a fast or higher intensity here. So we have the capacity to use some oxygen, but we are still going to get tired. Okay, so we have a moderate number of them. PC stores are high. Okay, we've got a large fiber size. And when, when we get to the contraction, we do work quickly here. Okay, we do work quickly. It is suited for speed, strength, and power. Um, so you'll need phosphocreatine in the muscle to help be a little bit more forceful. Glycogen is high. So glycogen can be broken down and used. Okay. So glycogen is high and it's used. And this is give us some of our um, energy aerobically at the higher intensity. Okay. Triglyceride stores, the fat stores are lowering their moderate. Okay. To use fat stores, you have to be working at a low intensity or be extremely well trained to be able to do glycogen sparing usually you're using glycogen because it's at a higher intensity so the triglyceride stores are lowering then move on to the function fast speed of contraction okay they are white fibers okay they're less reliant on oxygen as we know but they do still use it high force of contraction due to that high a large fiber size, sorry, I should say. Resistance of fatigue is moderate. Um, now, if you were to just compare fast oxidative, glycolytic, and slow oxidative, the resistance fatigue would be low. But as we're describing the characteristics of all, it's moderate, but they do tire fairly quickly, and you'll notice that when with the example activity or event I will give you. Aerobic capacity moderate, again, it's low compared to slow oxidative, but it's moderate compared to fast glycolytic, which we'll come on to next. So it's just a way of comparing between the three. But if you were to compare with slow oxidative, they, they'd be low resistance to fatigue in comparison to that um, <clears throat> and low aerobic capacity, um, lower. But right now it's moderate. We do have the ability to use... Um, oxygen for energy high anaero anaerobic capacity as you can imagine okay we're using high pc stores high glycogen stores we contract quickly we contract with high amounts of force we're working anaerobically and we get tired quickly um, or moderately and the athlete uh, the, the main answer here will be 400 meters if you go to the olympics the 800 meters is a, is a fast run event Okay, maybe at school level might be a touch touch slower, to say the least. But um, 400 metres would be the answer here. Um, and that's because you do need some oxygen um, to get around 400 metres as fast as possible. So you need fast contractions. You're running at speed. It's still a 400 metre sprint. Um, but you will rely on some oxygen. But it's still mainly a fast twitch fibre. <clears throat> And lastly, fast glycolytic. Okay, so these are our fast twitch fibers. Okay, so as you can see, they're a lot less red in color, meaning not much oxygen at all here. And um, so you can kind of guess what's going to come up here after we've done the first two. So we'll try and whiz through this fiber color white, fiber size large. Number of mitochondria has gone to low. OK, 
capillaries low, myoglobin low. They're all involved in either the transportation or the storage of, of or um, energy production of, of energy with oxygen. So you can imagine when we're not using oxygen, it's going to be low. PC stores are high, you know, that fast release energy. So the ATP PC system, which we'll cover in A2. So phosphocreatine being the energy stores, we use that as our energy and we use glycogen and triglyceride fat goes all the way to low. That's too slow of a system for the, the event we'll be working in here. The intensity we'll be working, we aren't using triglycerides. Function, fast speed of contraction. The fastest, I know fast oxidative glycolytic was fast, but these are our fastest fibers. Okay, so when we compare between the three, these are the fastest. High forces of contraction, okay. Low resistance to fatigue. We are working with low aerobic capacity. We're not using oxygen. We are working high anaerobic capacity. So because we're doing that, we are fatiguing very quickly because the, the contractions are very forceful, okay? And they're happening very quickly, okay? And this would be suited to something like the 100 meters. Also powerlifting, especially PB powerlifting, um, one rep max, so one to three reps would be a range, um, but it is also used there. I just like to use the three running events to get that image in our mind, so marathon, 400 and 100 um but javelin shot put that forceful fast contraction okay are going to use fast glycolytic fibers okay and he wasn't in tokyo like the other two but usain bolt the main man okay so just to put that on a continuum okay we move down so slow oxidative so fast oxidative glycolytic and then fast glycolytic. So that's just um, an explanation of the structural characteristics and the functional characteristics, which is what you're mainly asked to do in your exam and what this revision video is aimed at. Okay, there are a lot more videos out there more in depth that will cover recruitment of fibers, um, <clears throat> all or nothing and, and things like that, but and um, this is what we're required to revise. So I hope it helps. Thank you.